So let's talk through the solution here. All right, so here um, at the beginning, we're opening the shapefile, stepping through the, the uh, features in the file, and there should be five of them, one for each borough, and we're adding them to a dictionary. Here the, the borough name is getting set into a variable called borough, and we create a dictionary, NYC Geom, keyed by the borough name that contains uh, a shapely geometry. Here the shape of that record geometry is going to be a shapely multi-polygon, and then we plot each one here. Okay, so that's, that's the reading and plotting and creating the dictionary. Now we don't have to read the file again because I've saved this dictionary. And I can just iterate over the, the items in the dictionary and do calculations on it. So here, for borough and geometry in uh, the items here, the items in the dictionary, we have the borough, the um, area, so geom.area is just the, the area of the multi-polygon. And then I do one more calculation here. I divide it by the number of square feet in a mile. So that actually gives us square miles as well. And if you want to do things in metric, you could do in square meters. rearranging. All right, so that, that just calculate the area in feet and then in square miles. And then the fraction of each borough more than one kilometer from the boundary. So I dilated each multi-polygon. So that is give it a negative number for the buffer uh, method. So the buffer that is uh, minus 3281 feet per kilometer. So I'm dilating the, the buffer by, the, what's that? Eroding. Yeah, sorry, eroding, yeah, eroding. Um, negative dilating, right? Um, so we're eroding it by one kilometer and calculate the area of the eroded polygon and divide by the outer polygon and, and plot that as a fraction or, or print it as a fraction. And then finally, this was just extracting the, the largest geometry in the borough of Manhattan. Just loop over all the, the polygons in Manhattan and find which one has the largest area and, um, and capture that one. All right. So let's run that. Multi-polygon, multi-polygon, multi-polygon. There's the areas. We have square feet, which are large numbers, and the square miles. We have 42, 70, 58, 22, and 109 square miles. And here's our plot of the, um, of the polygons. And the, uh, the eroded version, one kilometer from each boundary. I almost said one kilometer from, from uh, the coast, but that's not quite true on the borough boundaries, right? Because we have some land boundaries here. Uh, and, and those wouldn't count, and it would be, we don't have the data to extract which ones are land and which ones are internal. So I, I just did for the boundary itself. And the, the fractions, uh, they were printed here. So only 25% of Manhattan is more than one kilometer from a boundary, and 62.7% of Staten Island is more than one kilometer from the boundary. <coughs> right? Okay, so straightforward enough? All right. All right, we have 10 minutes. So that was it for exercises. So I'm just going to uh, touch on a few things that we really didn't have time to talk about uh, in detail, and these are really powerful tools, and they're very accessible from Python, so I, I want to mention them. Um, 
The first one is uh, post-GIS, or post-GIS sometimes. And this is a spatial extension to PostgreSQL, um, which is a, an open source relational database. Um, this isn't the only spatial extension to databases. Oracle and Microsoft and others have, have spatial uh, capabilities. Some of the NoSQL databases have spatial capabilities as well. Um, but I think PostGIS is probably, you know, it, certainly in the open source world, it's the, the biggest and best supported uh, of them. So, so if, you're using, if you're using things in a database, um, and you want to do spatial queries on them, uh, PostGIS is a really nice tool to do it. Um, and what it is is an extension to PostgreSQL that lets you store geometries and query geometries. And it has a spatial index uh, called an R tree that does you know, spatial queries really uh, efficiently. Uh, there are versions of R trees that are accessible in, in Python outside of this tool as well, but, uh, but for it, uh, PostGIS is queries, it's using that. So now you, we can do SQL queries that are things like uh, select the number of points in each, uh, in each geometry for each row of our uh, database and, and it just queries that. We can calculate the area um, and so on. So, so here's, a, here's an example of how you do that in Python. To, to do that SQL query, this is connecting directly with the, the Python database API. So we actually send SQL queries to the, the SQL backend and execute them on a cursor, right? So if you're not comfortable writing SQL or you don't want to do it at this level, there are um, object relational models. Uh, SQL Alchemy uh, is, is the standard one that, that wraps all of these tools for you and gives you a Python object that you can do these kind of query operations on. It's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about, but if you're doing that, that you want to, might want to look into it. Not by itself, but there's, a, there's something called GeoAlchemy that does that. So GeoAlchemy has, um, you know, depends on uh, SQL Alchemy and has the geospatial aware awareness to do those kinds of things. Yep. Okay, and, and uh, this subject came up uh, before. Let me just talk about it in the context of post-GIS, uh, where you have the distinction between geometry, which is planar, and Cartesian calculations, and all the, all the calculations are in whatever the projected units are. Right, so if your, if your uh, numbers are in degrees, then it's calculating squared degrees for areas and degrees for distance and so on. And if they're in projected feet, that's what you get. Uh, geography are points on an ellipsoid in general, usually WGS84, and I think uh, PostGIS only works with WGS84 for geography uh, for the moment. And distance and area calculations are all in meters, right? So they're area on the ellipsoid, and they do uh, calculations like that. So you can choose what type you're going to do, geometry or, or geography. And you can translate between them, right? Um, and those kinds of conversions um, are pretty straightforward. And then I mentioned before, if you want to do those kinds of geography calculations outside of uh, post GIS, you can use uh, Geographic Lib, is a, a library that does that. Uh, okay, and then finally, let me mention a, a few other things in the short remaining time. Uh, scripting and interacting with PyQGIS, QGIS's Python capabilities. Um, QGIS has a Python console that you can call up. You can write Python plugins for QGIS. And you can use Q, uh, PyQGIS functions, that is, um, things within QGIS's capabilities in an outside Python application. So you can interact with Python, between Python and QGIS in all those three kinds of ways. Um, and then ArcGIS has those same capabilities with, with ArcPy. 
Uh, and I don't have any detail about that. Uh, we do have someone uh, in the room who knows a lot more about it than, than I do. So if you're uh, interested, uh, you, can, you can talk to Sean. Um, I said I wasn't going to talk about web mapping, but let me just mention two sort of interesting players in, in web mapping that uh, are, are easy enough to interact with in Python. Uh, one is D3, which has really uh, kicked it up in the available map projections that it can do. Uh, there's, there's just great stuff that, that, um, that D3 can do in, in map projections now. Um, so, so really nice visualization tools. And interacting with that, um, you know, with, with data that's output by Python is, is uh, pretty easy. And another one is Leaflet. Leaflet is a um, mapping layer that uh, you can just throw a, a GeoJSON file at and it will, uh, it will render it for you. And I think that's what uh, GitHub is using underlying its, uh, visual, its automatic visualizations of GeoJSON files that you commit to your repo. Um, and that's, that's really straightforward to use as well. Okay, so let me uh, leave you with a few more outside links that I think are, are interesting, a, a few more web mapping. GeoDjango has, has um, object models for uh, geography in the Django world. Uh, so that's another big part of Python that I haven't touched. Uh, GeoAlchemy I mentioned is the, is the ORM layer for SQL alchemy for spatial awareness. Uh, Sean Gillies uh, has a lot of information. He's the primary author of Shapely and Fiona and other packages in Python uh, that I've leaned on heavily in this. And, uh, and then there's a, a data notebook that, that uses some of these ideas. Uh, this is by uh, Rich Signell from the USGS. This is a really nice example. Um, so check that out if you have time as well. Uh, and then I will close there. Um, Thanks for your time. Uh, I want to remind you that we have a reception in about an hour and a half at, at NTHOT 515 Congress Ave uh, on the 21st floor. Uh, so you're all welcome to come by. And I'll be around here for a little while longer if uh, you have any further questions. So thanks. <laughs>